Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TGCon Live 2020. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Solution Spotlight webinar on quality management from trace gains. My name is Matthew Passananti, and I'll begin today's session by providing you with an overview of the product. Now, following the presentation, I'll turn it over to our sales operations manager, Jason Mueller, who will guide you through a product demonstration. Finally, we'll open up the last 15 minutes for the webinar to a question and answer session. So if you have any questions or you think of one during the presentation or demo, please let us know by typing it into the chat box and we'll be happy to answer your questions at that time. Again, thank you very much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to be presenting such an amazing solution to the food, supplements, and CPG industries. I'm excited to be here. You should be too. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, Trace Gains has built quality management to help solve the challenges our customers were facing in managing the quality operations on their plant floor. So here's some of the most common challenges we see in the market today. First, many manufacturers and brand owners are utilizing paper forms and clipboards and binders to track and monitor the quality of their shop floor operations. Next, they use paper documents that are rife with manual errors that cause downstream questions, uncertainty, and risk for production operations. We're constantly reminded that when processes are manual in nature, audits are slow and stressful, data insights are often non-existent, and the issues and emerging problems that get captured on paper, they can't be mined for process improvements and insights. Many customers report that this lack of insight increases their risk, their downtime, and their cost as it's associated with equipment failures, and maintenance issues, and product defects. And finally, the administration of a safety plan and corrective actions are often time and resource intensive due to the efficiencies associated with these manual processes and interventions. So if you're with us today, you may be experiencing one or more of these problems. And today we'll highlight some of the most beneficial features of quality management from trace gains. We'll begin by explaining how quality management allows food and supplements and CPG companies to drive continuous process improvements into the quality of their plant floor operations. You'll see how this is accomplished by delivering real-time insight into the people, processes, and quality measures that matter most. And lastly, you'll be provided with a demonstration of our quality management products so that you can familiarize yourself with the features and functions that can help free your quality department from manual processes and automate your shop floor operations. Now, it's our hope that in the end, you'll see how quality management from Trace Gains provides a centralized repository to, to digitally collect, store, and analyze your quality data. And that data can then be used to drive continuous quality improvements throughout your shop floor operations. Trace Gains empowers quality teams on the plant floor by centralizing and digitizing quality control and safety data. So let's take a closer look at how Trace Gains accomplishes this with quality management. First, quality management provides a single system to house and analyze your quality data. By organizing and digitizing the relative and relevant quality documentation for all facilities within a single repository, we can help companies to set foundations to drive continuous improvement. And with digitized forms, you can ensure plant flora information will be automatically aligned with your compliance standards and your benchmarks, and you can monitor the access of your critical control points your food safety plans, and your standard operating procedures, as well as other critical documentation. Next, our quality management solution automates manual processes and delivers dynamic insight into your plant floor and quality operations. When issues arise, the system is going to trigger notifications in real time, and it's going to empower employees to act. And quality management then utilizes automated workflows and notifications to initiate plant floor processes like HACCP audit processes, CARs, and more. And within these automated processes, departments can submit, they can track and verify documents as they travel through an electronic approval process and, and, and receive real-time notifications to keep them up to date. And from a scheduling perspective, plant floor employees can be assigned checklists from you know, tasks so that they know exactly what to do each day. And if an employee is out of compliance or needs a, a complete a training course in a specific area, they can be alerted to that as well. With quality management from Trace Gains, you can even schedule and record prerequisite procedures, ongoing daily controls, and even ad hoc events across your shop floor. And it's also important to note that quality management centralizes and streamlines the oversight of training programs by establishing checklists for employees, job role, and even departments. 
When issues arise around training, behavior, or safety, a corrective action request will be automatically generated in real time and immediately visible to the user throughout their dashboard. If this happens, your employees will be prompted to follow a scheduled set of tasks and fulfill established procedures. And the best part here is that they can respond by entering their activities and business rules uh, you know, directly into the system. Uh, alerts uh, will streamline corrective actions and generate permanent records of the problems, root cause analysis, actions taken, workflow, and approvals. So when it comes to program compliance, employees will receive confirmation of their compliance for a complete prerequisite programs prior to starting production. With quality management, the forms you once kept in binders and filing cabinets are digitized. And this means that data is gathered electronically on the plant floor and automatically matched with the appropriate compliance standards and key benchmarks. Now, our electronic forms come preloaded with GFSI and FISMA document standards, and, and, and if needed, additional standards can be easily added to meet other regulatory guidelines. TraceGaze ensures that you can deliver an efficient response to demanding customer audits. If you, you can easily store and retrieve quality data, you can maintain control over records of training status and other related requirements. And whether you're focused on maintaining compliance with FISMA or other revolving regulatory guidelines, for example, you want to respond to a demanding customer audit or comply with a GFSI certified program, you'll be able to respond accordingly, as the entire audit trail for your quality operations will be tracked from beginning to end. Verification and validation helps you identify corrective actions. You can review them and nothing falls through the cracks. And because of this, easily accessible comprehensive quality data means a more efficient plant floor and less work overall. So in today's presentation, you learned how quality management from trace gains help companies to drive continuous improvement with the ability to store and analyze quality control and safety data in a single system. And all of this is designed to provide immediate insight into the plant floor and quality operations. Now in a minute, I'll hand it over to Jason for a demo and you'll see firsthand how this single repository is used to organize and digitize all your relevant quality documentation for your facilities and your organization. You'll learn how training management centralizes and streamlines your training programs with uh, automated checklists by employee, by job role and department. And with notifications and workflows, You'll see how to initiate plant floor processes with automated workflows and notifications, including HACCP, audit processes, CARs, and more. You'll generate a corrective action request and, and automatically and immediately alert designated personnel when issues arise. And finally, you'll see how to analyze quality control and food safety data for real-time plant floor insights that drive continuous improvements. And if I know Jason, he'll go above and beyond, and he'll have a lot more in store for you as well. So Jason, may I please pass the baton your way? Thank you for that presentation and hand off, Matthew. Uh, I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so with you guys uh, actually getting our hands a little dirty going into the product itself. Uh, so what we'll do is first spend some time looking at the document management that happens at the plant floor. Uh, then we'll segue into the data collection, whether that's your control point, points, uh, prereqs we're going out and, and cleaning things in the plant, calibrating equipment, and so on. Uh, that is going to then take us to uh, the point where we want to validate that information. We're going to identify where there are any issues. Do we have to push this out to a corrective action? Uh, and then finally, the, the ship and sign off. And then we'll wrap up looking at some of the analytics that you can perform with the software. Now, for anyone that's familiar with TraceGain software, this is going to look pretty familiar. There's a number of different tabs up top, uh, each with its own unique content. As we go through the tabs, you'll see uh, that there's dashboards with the various data sets that are going to be relevant for where we're at. Uh, I always point out it looks a lot like Excel, and, and that's intentional. We know that's where a lot of people are coming from, so we want to ease that transition. Uh, but, of course, make everyone's lives a little easier by digitalizing this content. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin here in the Documents tab. And this is an area that's designed to store any documents that you need to quickly access uh, from the plant. As I click here and we look at some of the different examples I, I built in in our different dashboards uh, that are here, hopefully this will help you think, oh, okay, yeah, these are documents that I have. This kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, maybe I need a place to store all my training documents. Everybody that's working for me needs to refer to certain documents. Uh, I need to pull them out of the system, keep them all in one place. I can do that. 
Uh, maybe I need to keep all my SOP documents in one place. You'll probably have a lot more than I do, but uh, we have essentially, uh, think of these as dashboards almost as, as folders where we go ahead uh, and store these. Uh, they're very similar to how we handle document management or other software, which is to say uh, that you can drag and drop documents into the system. Uh, you can upload them. There is a uh, communications tool. So if you need to work through some issues on the document, as you work on your way to approving that document, uh, you can do so. There's a full accountability for who's gone ahead and made changes, uploaded documents, and so on. Now, the one thing that works a little differently here is anything that's going to be linked to uh, your GFSI scheme. That is a good thing because what we can do is we can preload a checklist into the system for you to work off of. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and use SQF. You can see I have BRC up here, and we can really support uh, any any of the, the major approaches that are out there. Um, but this framework exists from day one. You know, and so you're basically treating this like a checklist and you're going through and knowing, hey, I need to upload a document to meet each of these individual needs. You know, you will have uh, the various gates that are required to go ahead and improve this. Uh, you're going to probably, you know, start with maybe uploading something that you have in place right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, if someone needs to approve that, we can actually configure this to meet uh, those different steps. Uh, and uh, how you'll probably use these dashboards, is you'll see here I clicked on the one that has all. Uh, and once these make their way to approved, they're now available to share with the people that work on the plant floor. And so what I've done here is I've just gone ahead and uh, copied the initial dashboard. And these are filtered just to show the ones that are approved. And so uh, these are the ones that we would refer to if there was an incident or a need to go ahead and look at these. Uh, something else that's unique uh, for the quality management software is we have authoring tools. Uh, and so for the first time with TraceScan software, uh, I can come in here and I can actually use an editor to build a document that I might not currently have. Uh, and this is pretty simple. We're just going to come in here and, and hit new. Uh, and, you know, for those SQF documents, I can actually go ahead and start typing that out. And you can see it populates with some of those document types that are out there. I'll go ahead and just pick on this doc control method and you'll see that there is versioning in the system. Uh, this will be my, my first version because I haven't created this document yet. Uh, and as far as authoring goes, uh, a couple things we want to pay attention to here. There is a full HTML editor. This works a lot like Word, so you don't need to be very advanced to use this. There's no coding required. Uh, and this will support images and, and tables. You can actually even cut and paste content from existing documents into here. Uh, there is going to be the ability to go through uh, a single or multi-tier approval process. Uh, and this all will lead up to ultimately releasing these documents and they'll go ahead and live back into the documents tab. Uh, one other piece I'll, I'll share on this end is going to be this training tab down here. A lot of times when we're uh, bringing in documents into the system, we're thinking about things that are required of the people who are working in our plant. Uh, and that includes the training they're required to take. And so we do have a mechanism in here that can alert both you as well as your personnel when that training is due, if it's something that you know they have to take every year, every three years, whatever it may be. Uh, and so I can come in here and uh, if I want, I can go to the employee summary and this is just gonna show me, here are all the people that are working for me. Are there any statuses I need to pay attention to? And here, demo site, lots of different things wrong. I can see, all right, well, Amanda actually has uh, a training that's needed for food defense, and she actually has two that are overdue as well. You know, I might have a warning. These are coming up. You know, they haven't happened yet. Uh, and uh, occasionally someone's up to date, and that's a good thing. Uh, I also might just be responsible for a particular type of training. You know, maybe I run the HACCP training, and so I just want to see the status for that one particular training. I can, again, see all my employees. I can come in here and see who's completed, who is not applicable, and who needs to come in and finish their training. And when we go in to the record for the employees, uh, this is just simply where we store all the information around what trainings are they required to take, 
you know, what is their current status on taking those. And this is configurable. If, we, you know, if you actually go ahead and grade people during these trainings, we can include that in here. Uh, I can actually even store documents if there's certificates or results for the training that can put in here as well. So uh, not, not a learning management system. This isn't going to give the training. This is just allowing you to keep track of the, the status of the folks uh, that go ahead and need the training. And notifications can automatically be sent out of the system. So, um, you know, you can go ahead and monitor this. But, you know, for instance, if a status of uh, training needing comes up, you can actually build a workflow and the system will send that email out uh, to the employee, letting them know that that's something that they need to be aware of. All right, so let's shift gears and talk about data collection. This is really what brings people to the table. You know, most folks are collecting information on paper and then it gets stuffed in a folder and then it sits somewhere for a long time and no one really does anything with that. And uh, we really have the opportunity to change that by digitalizing your data. Uh, and there are three areas in the system where we're going to collect data. Uh, the first we're going to look at is controls. Uh, and I think of this as kind of our manufacturing line. Whatever we're producing, you know, we might need to run a metal detector. We might need to uh, monitor the temperature on something. We'll actually see a couple of different examples that I have pre-built into the system. You know, we're checking visual uh, fill height, lid seal, magnet control, thorn procedure. I mean, we could go on and on, but this is, you're manufacturing something, you're required to collect data as that line is running, uh, and controls is where that's gonna happen. Uh, Prereqs tends to be those things that happen before and after we're manufacturing. We need to go out and, and maybe we need to verify the temperature for the oven uh, before we run something. Maybe I actually need to go in and I need to clean the plant floor, so we're gonna do a sanitation check. Uh, maybe my job is uh, at the beginning of the day, I need to go ahead and calibrate all the, the equipment before we run it. And then miscellaneous logs is going to capture everything else. Uh, and I have a couple examples up here. It might include, you know, I need to have a visitor log uh, where people are going to go ahead and let me know who they're here to see. Uh, you know, maybe I provide them with uh, some information that they need to, to take in before they can go out on the floor. I could also keep track of lying down time. Uh, maybe I'm managing equipment if I'm using emergency equipment and I need to log that every time I use it. Um, those would all fall into miscellaneous logs. The nice thing, though, is that whether you are collecting data in miscellaneous logs, prereq or controls, it's all set up and organized the same way. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'm going to pick on this weight control. And we'll look at one that already exists. Uh, and how these are typically configured is you're going to start with this general information area. This is going to tell us what programs are running. If we've gone ahead and scheduled a particular collection time, it can let us know. We can identify the, the production area where we're going ahead and grabbing this data. Certainly want to include the, the product and, and batch or lot IDs as needed. Uh, we'll see instructions. So, you know, if I'm the person that's responsible for collecting this data, it can't help for me to have a little reminder, hey, I'm going to record weights of five samples. I'm going to log the actual collection time. That's what helps identify line downtime. It's going to compare the actual collection time to the scheduled collection time. Uh, I'll also log in and let everybody know I was the one that collected this data. I can do this as a drop down. We can have an e-signature. Lots of different ways to configure this. And then the next area, really the most important area, is where we're inputting the data we're supposed to collect. Uh, and one of the things that I want to bring attention to is the system has the business rules built in ahead of time. So I'm going ahead and inputting this information. System knows, hey, this needs to be between a range of 8 and 15. I can actually go ahead and confirm that. I don't need to remember it. System, as you can see, color codes. So it can bring my attention if there's something that I should look at or something that's completely out of whack and might actually uh, require corrective action. And there's lots of different ways that this can be configured. I could, for instance, for this, uh, write the rules at the individual weight. So, you know, we can go ahead each time I, I put in one of these weights, it'll mark it as uh, out of conformance. Or I could have the system take these five weights, as I've done here, average them and write the rule at the average. Uh, and this is just, as I said, one example. It could be numerical values. It could be text values, positive, negative, radio buttons, lots of different ways to collect data. But I do also recommend we have this notes field so the technician who's putting in this information uh, can share whatever else uh, we need to know as this progresses to that next step that we're going to look at in verifying this data. And if I really think that something's wrong here, I can even raise my hand. It's like raising 
a flag for someone and saying, hey, this is so bad, I think a corrective action is needed. We're going to have to get some more people involved. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll look at an example here of a prereq just to kind of show you how all these things are, are pretty similar. And here I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll pick on one of these sanitation checks. I think this will have some different data inputs we can look at. Um, but otherwise, you know, once again, general information, what am I running? When am I supposed to collect it? Where am I? What am I supposed to do? And then here, you know, I've gone ahead and, uh, you know, I'm taking some type of measurement off of this particular equipment. Again, we see the business rules are built in. I'm taking a swab of something. It's supposed to be between a range of zero and five. I got an eight, so it's lit it up as red. We know that there's an issue, uh, you know, Here's the example of the radio buttons. And again, I can raise my hand if something really wrong. Now, how this data is collected, there's really two different ways that we can approach this. Uh, you know, if we don't really know what we're running every day, but I come in and I know what my job is and I know what I'm supposed to collect, uh, I can just come in here and I can hit new and I can say, all right, well, you know, today I'm running the lid seal program. So I want to create a new line item for that. Uh, and it's going to give me a blank record to start inputting this information. And I'll go ahead and I'll say, I'm all right, collecting the information now. I'm technician number two. All the other information that I need to go ahead and put in here. And then I'm going to start recording my results and hitting save. Pretty straightforward. Then that goes ahead and, and we're going to see here in the next, it's going to push out to the person who has to verify that data. We do, however, also have a task scheduler. So this can kind of preload these. It'll You can actually inform the system. All right, so you know today I'm going to be running this particular line where we're going to be uh, in this particular example uh, running bacon, and the system knows that when we do that we need to run this particular control, and it's going to occur every 30 minutes. We're going to run this metal detector program that happens every three hours, and what will happen is every time the 30 minutes comes up, in this case every minute time the 30, three hours comes up it will actually go ahead and create the line item back into the uh, area where we collect that information. And so what will probably happen, Technician usually has a dashboard that's like this, is awaiting collection, and I can go ahead and see the ones that have populated and are waiting for me to, to put information in here. Now, the next step is going to be the verification process. And really how I, I highlight the benefit of this to people is if, if you are working the floor and you're responsible for following the problems, you know it's hard to be in multiple places at once. It's a lot easier to have a, a tablet or a computer in front of you and identify where are things going wrong, where do I need to be? And that's what we see in this verify and validate area. Uh, this is where all the collections from those technicians come to. Uh, and uh, I might have some dashboards to help me along. Maybe I want to just focus on the ones where they did in fact raise their hand and say that their corrective action was needed. I can very quickly see just here using the, the status column, uh, you know, what went wrong, what was out of spec. And if I need to, I can then go click into the record. This is where I would go ahead and quickly verify the stuff that's okay. But this is also where I can go ahead and see what data was inputted to inform me what went wrong. And if I agree, yeah, corrective action is needed here, I can come up top and I can say, okay, we want to go ahead and create a corrective action. Uh, and the corrective action is going to give us an opportunity uh, to view what went wrong and then start the, the steps as far as getting other people involved to resolve that problem, make sure it doesn't happen again. So we'll see here, there's, there's various steps. We're going to open a car. We'll release it to review. Uh, it'll be incomplete until somebody gets all that information in there and hopefully eventually we close it. Uh, I can come in here. I can give my, my car a title. Uh, I can go ahead and choose from any different car types. This is going to allow us to do reporting later um, where we see particular issues popping up. I, uh, of course, want to associate a date with this so we can see how long it takes for me to resolve this. Uh, and then I need to determine, okay, do we need a car analysis? If I say yes, it's going to now prompt us to uh, have an area where we complete root cause summary, product analysis, potentially a cost analysis. Do I need to put something on hold? And this will bring up data that's related to that. Uh, also, maybe a recall is needed. Maybe this is really something dire. And so we have a lot of information that that's comes into play here with what we need to enact that recall. Uh, I can then release this to the person that's going to be responsible. In this case, you might have seen up top, I chose that this was going to be 
uh, a maintenance issue. And so I might want to get maintenance people involved. And they're going to come in here and they're going to see the history of what happened, what started all on these lines, and they're going to have to start filling out this information. We do have a very helpful tool to make this communication happen. And all that's done through our workflow configuration. Uh, and what this does is uh, simply let the right people know, hey, you need to be in the system and working on something. Case in point here, you know, I've created a workflow where I say if a car is open and I've gone ahead and issued that car type as being calibration, it's going to go ahead and automatically send out a notification to a group of people. Uh, probably the, the maintenance people have to go and look at that. And then I'm actually, I can even automate some of those decisions that we just saw in the car uh, where I can tell the system, hey, if it's calibration, automatically require car analysis. And then I want you to send an email to this person to let them know as well. Uh, and so that is the, the, the um, corrective actions piece. And I actually have a tab where I can come and look at all my corrective actions in one place. Uh, I can use my dashboard to organize these if I need to see, you know, all the cars that have been assigned to a particular person, or if I just want to see all the cars that are currently open uh, and, you know, kind of see what's going ahead and, and holding these up and so on. Uh, the last step in all of this is the pre-ship and sign off. And this is really the, the final step uh, where I can come in and I've collected all of my information. Maybe there wasn't an issue and I'm moving this along pretty quickly. Maybe there was an issue and I just need to confirm that it was resolved and we can kind of see the history of everything that's happened here. And I just make a decision. Is this okay to ship? Yes or no. Uh, you know, what is the release date? Who's signing off on this? Any other additional details, keep in mind these, these records we're looking at are configurable. So if you have additional needs that can be put into here, we can go ahead and accommodate that. One last thing we'll talk about here is going to be the analytics tool. So now that we've digitalized the data, uh, not only do you have a, a history of data collection that you can quickly refer to, uh, which is particularly helpful if you know being audited or something along those lines, uh, but we now have actionable data that we can make decisions based on. And so I can come in here and I can take any data point that's the, in the system and turn it into a chart uh, and a chart that's actually uh, dynamic in that it will go, take me back to the resulting data. So if I came in here and, for instance, I'm looking at the control point for uh, weight here and I see things have really gone off the rails at a particular point, I can click on that point and it's going to go ahead and it's going to take me to the uh, resulting data that is going to show when things went upside down. Uh, now, very easy to go ahead and create these. I'm just going to come up top and and we'll say we want to go ahead and pull data from perhaps prereqs. You know, I want to look at something uh, related to this pH meter calibration. It's going to ask me, you know, what do I want to, to collect? I want to obviously see results. Lots of different chart types that are available, a little over a half dozen here. You know, maybe I just need a uh, horizontal or vertical bars. I'm going to go with a line chart here. And because we, you know, we're manufacturing a clip, we might need this to refresh, you know, every 30 minutes. Uh, but at that point, I now have a chart that's going to go ahead and, and capture the information that I need, and I can pull these out of the system, drop them into a PowerPoint. As you can see here, I can even organize charts into different dashboards uh, here that I can then share with anyone who needs to see this data. So that is uh, quality management. You know, again, the, the focus is uh, trying to get you away from paper, making things a little bit more efficient. Uh, and uh, we're now going to open things up for any questions that you have or anything else that you were hoping to see if I did not cover that. Thanks. All right. Well, welcome, everyone, to the Q&A portion of our Quality Management Solutions Spotlight session. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for viewing our, our Solutions Spotlight. Uh, for the best viewing experience here, we recommend you view the theater mode, which is going to allow you to click on the theater mode button and, uh, and view it that way. Uh, please feel free to go ahead and type your questions into the chat box, if you will. If you experience any audio or video issues or anything like that, there's a support tab in the bottom right corner where, where you can get help. Uh, after the session, we'd really appreciate it if you'd go ahead and fill out the survey, and there's a link in the uh, presentation information. So with that, uh, we've got a few questions that have come in already, uh, so I'll go ahead and we'll start fielding those. 
Uh, Ruben, you good to go? I'm ready. Hey, everybody. Do it. All right. So our first question, uh, what is the implementation process for QM? Interesting question. And I got a feeling we have a lot of folks on here who are using our other modules and probably have a bit of an inkling about how our other setup processes work. And QM has some similarities and a few differences. Um, naturally, having implemented a whole lot of customers onto this, we have a standard process, which begins with you filling out a configuration workbook. This essentially is a big listing of what do you want set up in the module? Which of those critical control points do you want to have as digital forms? Which fields do you want your staff to be recording? Is this going to be a text field or a date field or whatever it may be? So we take that from you. You have a dedicated customer success manager. They help you set up the module. But that's really kind of only half of it, you know. It'd be very simplistic to say that's the setup and you're good to go. A big part is also kind of training your staff. So we very often, at least in the pre-COVID days, would send someone on site and we hope to be able to do that again to make sure that you get this up and running the right way, training some staff, making sure the devices you set up across your production floor, different facilities are up and running, good, well connected to Wi-Fi and all of that. So this module more than most takes a little bit longer of a deployment period because there's a the configuration and then getting your staff trained up on it versus some of our other ones, which are isolated to one department, a handful of employees. Fabulous. That's very good. Um, we've got a question from Karen. Uh, Karen writes in, what type of device is typically used to report data into QM in the plants that you are seeing? Yeah, we've seen quite a variety. Um, First and foremost, our technology works on really anything with a live web browser. So we've seen, you know, good old computer laptops out there on the floor, but often it's a little bit easier to deploy a smaller, more lightweight, more inexpensive technology. So we see a whole lot of tablets, sometimes in that, you know, vertical position, sometimes sideways. But I think the best one that I've seen implemented are Chromebooks. So these, if you're not familiar with them, are kind of like laptop light versions that are really just focused on connecting to the internet, which is just what our system needs. Another nice thing about Chromebooks is that they have nice keyboards, you know, full-size keyboards. So for situations where people are really inputting not just a number or two, which a tablet or even really a phone size device could handle, if they need to type anything out, having a full-size real keyboard can be very handy. So I've seen a lot of different devices used. Chromebooks are what I steer people towards. And since the upfront cost, you know, like a hundred bucks a unit or so, it seems pretty affordable. Yeah, okay, that sounds great. Uh, another question, can my current cars process be built within F uh, QM and how customizable is it? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> first I always pounce on that word customizable. I'm very careful to rarely say that because all of our modules are configurable. And I know that sounds like a micro difference there, but customizable usually means in the software world, you have to write complex code and it's gonna cost a whole lot of money to set up. Configurable means you can actually adjust it yourself or of course, with a little bit of our help, whether it's through one of our online courses or an actual person kind of teaching you how to fish. So mm -hmm. to get back to the real question though, so we have a whole car section in quality management that I'm sure you saw in that video and no two people use that the same way. Mm -hmm. So the ways people customize it or configure it are as such. They decide what types of information might they need to record for a single corrective action. And maybe it's not just the same set of information for any type of issue. Maybe you need cascading areas. So if one issue led to a recall, maybe you'd wanna be able to click a little button in that cars form and have it expand out 15 new fields saying, did we run the recall correctly? Did we notify the right folks? Sometimes these cars have different approval processes. Maybe multiple people need to be invited in via a workflow to sign off on that corrective action as it makes its way to a closed status. So that's a few different examples of how it's configurable, but the grand answer is, yeah, make it match up to the way you wanna do things or maybe the way you want to do things. So as you come on board, let it match up to the best practices for the industry. That's fabulous. So it sounds very, very flexible, which is great. Uh, you're a popular guy because we got questions rolling in. So let's see. Uh, Dan Goodhue asked a question. He says, how far ahead of time can QM receive product uh, production work orders from ERP and planning software? And how flexible is the system with regards to production changes? 
Great question. Ooh. Thank you. Multiple questions kind of tucked into there. I think the most grandiose answer is just like all of our other modules, it has an available API that you can connect outside systems to. Mm -hmm. For quality management, very often that type of system would be an ERP. And we see it happening on kind of both ends. Maybe it's the ERP, like the question suggests, kicking off a certain process. That might be kicking off, as we saw in that demo a moment ago, a set of tasks that need to be completed, maybe for a particular batch of product being made. Or maybe it's the ERP reaching in kind of at the tail end of everything, checking off for batch one, two, three, that all 15 of these tasks get completed and verified in the right order. So to say the timing on that, it's so dependent on the business use case, but there are ways to have information sent in well in advance that then becomes relevant later on. That would be the ERP system setting up one of those scheduled tasks that maybe a day or a week or a month later comes to fruition on that um, awaiting collection tab where the floor staff actually then tackles that, whatever that may be. Okay. And there might've been a third part of that question. Matthew, remind me if there was. Uh, how far ahead of time can we receive production work orders? Uh, how flexible is the system in regard to production changes? Production changes is the last part I was thinking of. So a lot of people call this rework uh, and it's the tricky situation to handle. And it's tricky in real life because very often rework is kind of a unique situation. I heard one example the other day of a company that has a check built into QM for the cheese they're producing. They want to see, is it salty enough at the very tail end? And then if it isn't salty enough, they might have to follow through on a various set of different processes. Maybe it's so salty all of a sudden they need to scrap it. Maybe they need to go through a set of steps to add in more moisture to lower that salt value. So the way they set this up is to run it all through that cars tab area where people can develop out a set of different steps that they think need to be tackled. They have maybe another staff member then log into trace schemes and sign off on that new rework procedure. And then maybe it's even yet another employee that then kicks off that set of tasks or maybe even goes and tackles them themselves. So it's as flexible as you can be around a process which takes some ingenuity and creativity. Um, hardly ever is rework or those procedures done just fully auto. It needs more salts. So we have a machine pour some in. That's not quite the way it works in real life. So we made something flexible to handle whatever it may be. Oh, that sounds great. Um, Ruben and I, we're, we're going to buck the system a little bit. We got a lot of, got a lot of great questions here. So uh, we'll continue on if that works for everybody, because we want to get these in. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Uh, Giovanna Cook, beautiful name, uh, has uh, a question. Are these separate modules that would require purchasing in order to access, or do we have access if we have a trace gains account? QM is, quality management, is its own module. Um, as you'll see in most of these solution spotlights, you'll see how we sell our modules kind of all the cart, you might want to say. So if you're just using trace gains to manage your suppliers through our flagship module, you probably don't have access to quality management. We'd be happy to get you on board for it though. So we have some very common stacks of modules that come together where people say, oh, I want to start with this one, tack on the next one, talk to your account executive about potential discounts in that case. But um, odds are you don't have this today. If you wanted to run home and start using it, you're going to have to add it on. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Clayton, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, Clayton has a question. Can you add a workflow where one process prompts another, such as cooking prompts chilling for the same product? Ooh, so there's a lot of things you can do with workflows and not just a lot. There's a growing set of things you can do. We just introduced some new technologies where a workflow can kick off a record independently. So if you're auditing a facility and a, uh, something goes wrong, there's a critical issue, it could create a car record automatically. And we're building in that same sort of technology into quality management. Uh, what you can do today with workflows are a set of, I think seven or eight different things can be the end result. You could shoot off a templated email to somebody, a really quick, smaller kind of micro email. You could change certain other data values within the system, maybe even typing in or giving someone extra instructions in the subsequent form so they know how to act based off of some prior results. Uh, you can't quite kick off another set of scheduled tasks like we saw in that scheduler tab, but just about everything else under the sun you can run off, even kicking off other workflows and having a cascading series of steps. 
So that one's probably worth its own demo <laughs> to get really deep into. But good question. Sure. And we're happy to provide those types of demos, aren't we? Sure. Absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, we've got a couple more questions here. Uh, what are some of the tiers of reporting available in quality management? Yeah. So trace gains is kind of interesting. You know, the way we designed the system, you might have been looking at this demo today and said, oh, those screens remind me of screens I see in a different module. Mm -hmm. And that's because this part and also the reporting part is kind of built on the same bones. So like level one of reporting in my mind is having those user design dashboards, those tabular views of information that are sorted to have just the right columns. But you can go a step beyond that and maybe have a particular user look at their own dashboards that are relevant to them filtered a particular way. From there, you could have a little slide out graph, not sure if we had that in the video, where you could have a pie chart that instantly looks at the data in that particular user dashboard. Maybe it's a more cohesive way, a quick way to review things. Those little widgets, those charts that can fly out can be combined into that grand analytics page. And yet again, that one could have its own permissions where certain users can view it, other people look at dashboards that are updated every 15 minutes. Maybe there's an executive dashboard that's updated every 24 hours. And that's kind of where you can roll up information from all the UDDs, user design dashboards, into a more overall view. Last but not least, and I'll end after this, if you want to pluck the data out and use it in an extra outside system, you can do that in any number of ways, whether it's simply hitting the export button and grabbing it as like a comma separated file, or if you want to actually have it flow right into something like Microsoft BI, you can use our API to do that. So a lot of options, both in the product or if you want to plug it out. Awesome. And it seems as though we had somebody who came on just a little bit late wanting to ask questions about, uh, uh, can we only access quality management through a regular computer? And I think your answer to that previously was uh, that you can use a myriad of different systems if you'd like, and that a Chromebook is something that allows you a, a tremendous amount of flexibility at a great cost. And if you'd like to know more about that, uh, we've got some support people that can, that can help you. You can reach out to your, uh, your AE and we can go from there. Uh, right now, we don't have any other questions, uh, but what I would like to do is encourage everyone, if you would, please go ahead and hit the survey button and, uh, and fill out that survey. Uh, for this session, if you would. And remember that we also have additional sessions going on. Tomorrow, we have specification management and supplier compliance, followed by formula management and smart alerts uh, on uh, Thursday. So we have a lot more coming up in the solution spotlights. We'll be here. We hope to see you here. We had a great time today. We hope you did too. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everybody.